this computer is what I wanted. Okay. All right, so we're recording this computer. So let me just share it here again. So that was number 23 on the one and 21 on that one. That was it. All right, so I believe you have the notes for 8K. It should have been the second part of the notes I had given you the other day. Agree? If you don't, just follow along and I will have them posted for you. My, my phone had stuff on the stuff on it. I'll just say stuff. I don't know what it was, but it was stuff. All right. So hang on. Before I go there, I'm going to go here. I just want to make sure we're all set. I'm going to share this screen. So let's just make sure we're in the right spot. So this is this, this week. I'm going to go to this, or this. That was last week, week four. Let's go into week five. Just make sure where we're at. <clears throat> Week five, it looks like we have K that will be assigned tonight. L, we will do in class. So if you don't have it, you can print that off if you wanted to, or you can just write down problems you have questions about. And then uh, we'll have the quiz on, on uh, Thursday or Friday, depending upon what cohort, but there'll be a video. I'll give you the notes for trig A, and then I'll also give you the notes for trig B, because that'd be on Monday. So we'll take care of both of those. Um, next time we have class or in two times so we'll go there stop share go here all right now we are ready to do the lesson i hope you all had a nice weekend and 8k solving equations with radicals and rational exponents develop understanding for solving Radical equations, okay, I got that, let's move on. Radical function, a function that contains a radical such as a square root or a cube root. Radical equation is the equation that contains radicals and rational exponents. So like something to the two thirds power. So you have a, a fraction for uh, an exponent. To solve radical equations, you need to eliminate the radicals or rational exponents and obtain the polynomial equation. Here are the steps. So isolate the radical. Oops, didn't mean for that. I meant to move down. Isolate the radical or variable base with rational exponent. Raise each side to the equation to the same power to undo the rad radical exponent. Okay, we've already talked about that. Now there's something that we're going to start seeing in a little bit. It's something called an extraneous solution. It's a solution that if we plug it back into the original, it doesn't work. So it's from time to time takes place. So let's go ahead and start solving this problem. Um, let's see. All I'd have to do here is maybe add four to both sides. So I'd get third root of X is equal to four. I would have to raise both sides to the third power. So I'm going to get X equals four to the third. Four to the third is four times four times four, which is 64. And all you really need to do now is this answer seems great, but make sure it works. The third root of 64 is four. Is four minus four equal to zero? Yes, so our solution works. So you wanna start double checking these because we're gonna to get to a point where some of them might not work. Sometimes you might get two solutions. One of the solutions will work, one of them won't work. But it's a matter of doing that last step of plug it back in and make sure it works. Uh, problem number two, I'm gonna get uh, the X alone, so I'll divide each side. So that becomes 125. I'm then gonna raise each side to the reciprocal of two over three, which is, or three over two, which is two over three. So X equals the third root of 125 is five, five squared is 25. That answer seems fantastic. Double check to see if that answer works. 25 to the three over two, well, the square root of 25 is five. 5 to the third is 125. 125 times 2 is 250. So our answer does work. So again, I was just double checking my solutions. 
because sometimes the answer we get is called an extraneous solution and it doesn't work. Okay, once, once you plug it back in. And we are just fortunate that we had two that worked on our first couple. All right, next solution, our next problem. I'm gonna subtract 12 from both sides first. So I'm gonna get root 4x minus seven is equal to negative seven. We're gonna square both sides, square both sides. So I get 4x minus seven equals negative seven squared. Quantity squared is positive 49. Add seven, add seven. So 4x is equal to 56. Divide by four, divide by four. X equals uh, uh, 14. Why am I saying 16? Because I can't do math. 14. Okay, that seems like an awesome answer. But I want to take this 14, I want to plug it back in here. So I'm going to get 4 times 14, which is 56. 56 minus 7 is under the radical plus 12. I want to know if that's going to be equal to 5. Uh, 56 minus 7 is 49, plus 12 is equal to 5. Uh, square root of 49 is 7. Is 7 plus 12 equal to 5? No. This has no solution to the answer because the 14 didn't work. Okay, that one just had one answer that we had to test. This one has no solution. If we had tried to graph this on Desmos where I had the left side is y1 and the right side is y2, these would be two graphs that wouldn't cross. So this 14 is called an extraneous solution. It does not work. Does that make sense, my friends? And that says n slash s for no solution. Some people like to put empty set, the zero with the diagonal slash through it. Your choice, what you want to do. Next problem. Uh, what we want to do on this kind of problem is B and I have a radical on the same side. I'm going to move one of them to the other side. I'm going, to add, I'm going to add this to the other side. So I'm going to get two root x over here. I'm going to go ahead and square this side. And I'm going to square this side. Notice I group the two in there. So this side it just falls out to be 3x plus 2. But this side comes out to 4x. The reason that works is the 2 goes there and there. And then go ahead and solve it. So subtract 3x. So I'm going to get 2 is equal to x, so x equals 2. Seems like a wonderful answer to have, but let's see if it works. I'm going to take this 2, plug it in. 3 times 2, that's 6. 6 plus 2 is root 8. And then minus 2 root 2. Well, I know that root 8 is the same thing as 2 root 2. So 2 root 2 minus 2 root 2 is 0. So that solution does indeed work. But my friends, I can't emphasize enough. Check for extraneous solutions. Just because the problem is easy, just because the problem is easy, does not mean that your solutions will always work. So double check them, take those, plug them back in, make sure they're good. May I move on, my friends? <clears throat> okay. So next problem, I have grouped x minus two raised to the two thirds. So I'm going to raise each side to the 3 halves power. So then I get x minus 2 on the left side. The square root, because that's that would be square root. Square root of 25 is 5. 5 to the third is 125. Add 2 to both sides. So I get x equals 127. I love that answer. Let's make sure it works. Let's take 127, plug it back in for x. So 127 minus 2 is 125. 125 to the 2 thirds power. That says third root of 125 is 5. 5 squared is equal to 25. That works. This answer is fine. It is not an extraneous solution. Problem number six, I'm going to divide both sides by 3 first. Those cancel, so I get n plus 4 raised to the 3 halves power. 3 goes into 192. What is that? Uh, 6 times and 6, that's 12, so 64. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise both sides to the two thirds power. Okay, those cancel out, so I get n plus four. Okay, so the third root of 64 is eight. Eight squared is 64. Our third root of 64 is four. Third root of 64 is four. Four squared is 16. 
subtract four from both sides so I get to 12. Again, I really like that answer. Let's double check to make sure it works. N plus four is 16. So I get 16 to the three halves power. So that's the square root of 16, which is four. Four to the third is 64. So three times 64 is three times 64, 192. It works. So that is our answer. It is not an extraneous solution. Okay, remember that even roots have two possible solutions. Okay, so let's see, did I make any errors on that? So if I multiplied this to the three halves, ooh, that was square root. That should have given me on this one, because I raised it to three halves, I should have had a, because I'm doing the square root, square root, that would have given me a plus or minus five, so, Oh, fiddlesticks. Let me go back. I'll erase that real quick. I might have made a mistake. And I made a mistake on this one too. Boy, I tell you, occasionally I'll mess up with one of the classes. Now you're both here to witness it. All right. Raise this to the three halves. Raise this to the three halves. So x minus two equals plus or minus five to the third x minus two. The reason why that happened is the square root of 25. You know, I took the square root of both sides. That should have been plus or minus. So I get plus or minus 125. Then we're gonna go ahead and add two to that. So it looks like I get 127 and negative 123. Uh, let's see if that's gonna work. Negative 123 plugged in to the top. That's gonna give me negative 125. Third root of negative 125 is negative five. Negative five quantity squared is 25. This answer works. I do the same thing with 127. I already verified that works. So I have two solutions there. I apologize, I made an error on those. This one, I'm gonna raise both sides to the three halves power. So because I'm raising it to the three halves power, before I do that, I'm gonna divide by three, sorry. Divide by three, divide by three. Jeez, I keep messing up. Can't take me anywhere, friends. Uh, three going to that six times 64 to the three halves power. Because it's three halves power, that denominator means I need that plus or minus in there. So that's gonna be uh, plus or minus eight to the third. Eight to the third is 216. So I get plus or minus 216. I am going to, yep, let's see. Eight to the third, eight times eight times eight. Eight, oh my gosh, not 216. Friends, what's eight times eight times eight? 512. I do that right. Eight to the third. Eight raised to the third power. 512. Duh on my part. Subtract four from both sides. So that's going to give me 508 as one answer and negative 516 for the other. Let's make sure that works. If I plug 508 in, I get to 516. That works. If I do the negative, ooh, this answer does not work if I plug it in here. The reason it doesn't work is this becomes three times negative 516 plus four is negative 512 to the three halves power. So that means square root of a negative, that's I. So this does not work. 508's our only answer that works. Woo, Nelly, crazy one. All right, how much more do I got? Holy cow, I had that many more? Okay, so I got it. All right, uh-oh. All right, let's see if we work it. I have to square both sides. So I'm gonna put this in parentheses, square both sides. Foil this, that gives me x squared minus four x plus four. Uh, we can set both sides equal to zero. So I'm gonna go zero equals, I'm subtracting two x. So that gives me negative six x. I'm going to add five, so plus nine. This will then factor to x minus three and x minus three which is the same thing as x minus three quantity squared. 
if I take the square root of both sides, plus or minus zero is just zero, x minus three. So x is equal to three. Make sure your answer works. I plug three in, I get two times three, which is six. Six minus five is one. Square root of one is one. And then I get three minus two, which is one. My answer is correct. This one, I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna group both sides. I'm gonna square this side, I'm gonna square this side. That's gonna give me x squared plus five. This negative one away because I multiplied it times itself. And then I'm gonna FOIL out this side, so that's x squared plus 10x plus 25. Uh, let's make it equal to zero, so I'm gonna subtract x squared, so the x squareds are gone. So I get 10x uh, plus 20. Subtract 20, so I get a 20 over here. Divide by, so I get a negative two. Let's see if this negative two, if this is gonna work. I take negative two, plug it in. Negative two squared is four. Four plus five is nine. Square root of nine is three. I have a negative here, so I get a negative three here. If I plug negative two in here, I get negative two plus five, which is three. Negative three and positive three are the same number. That doesn't work. We have no solution, or we can hit empty set. Your choice. What time we out of here? Don't lie, because I'll find out when the bell rings. 54. Dude, I got time? How in the heck do I have time? Because you're going a million miles an hour, stir up. Okay, sorry. All right. Uh, use the intersect feature on the graphic calculator to solve the following equation. Okay. So let me write these down real quick. And then... Because I have the uh, Chromebooks in here, we're gonna, we'll be allowed to use the graphing calculator or we'll be able to use Desmos. And I'm gonna kind of guide you to Desmos. My friends, Desmos is a free app that you can get. It's D-E-S-M-O-S. You can get it for your phone if you want. It'd be the, about the only time I would allow you to use your phone on something. Yes, I understand you have photo math you could have on there. But let's say that you don't have photo math, but let's take a look. I'm gonna to go to desmos.com. I know I'm not showing it yet. <clears throat> All right, share, uh, Desmos. All right, so I wanna go ahead and graph both of those. I don't, I won't have them written down, but I'll go ahead and see if I can graph them. Looks like it showed up. All right, so when you're graphing both sides, what you want to do is the left side and the right side become its own equation. So I'm going to go y equals, and then you have to find the square root, so it's under here. Hit the keyboard, so I get 40 minus 6x. And it starts graphing it for you, but don't panic, it'll change, plus 9. So my first equation is that. My second equation is y equals 12. Now notice I can't see it, but what I can do, and I'm gonna to go to projector mode. So it's a fatter line. So I, the nice thing about Desmos allows you to move it around. Notice our top equation is our red line that seems like it starts and then goes to the left. And then our other one is just a horizontal line. So what you wanna do is you work, you're looking for the intersection. Our intersection, all we need is the X value the X value in this case is 5.167. So that's what our answer on that first question would be. So you set, you take both sides and you set it equal to zero. Now, I wanna show you one last thing because some people actually, no, I'm not gonna show it to you. I would say this way would be a completely appropriate way to do this problem. So you're looking again, just at the X value, you ignore the Y value because you're not looking for both the X and the Y value. You're only looking for the, the X value. Okay, and Desmos.com is very easy to graph with. Uh, let's try the next one. I'm going to go Y is equal to uh, three parentheses, X plus one, close parentheses. Do the caret, and then you might want to put this in parentheses, two thirds. Oops, and then close your parentheses, minus one move it to the right so it goes down one. So you're getting kind of a crazy looking problem. And then you're gonna go y equals 11, which is gonna be a horizontal line. And so if you look at the graph, 
kind of looks like this green valley, but you're looking for the two X values. So it looks like negative nine is one solution and seven is the other solution. Again, you're only looking for the X solutions of those. Okay, and again, we have the, the Chromebooks in class so we can use Desmos on these types of problems. I could show you in the graphing calculator. It takes a little bit longer because the windows change. Desmos works nicely because you just, you know, arrow out, arrow in, um, hit home and it'll take you back to your negative 10, positive 10 and just scroll around with your mouse. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing this. Go back to sharing this. So we just did those two problems. And that is it. So my friends, for next time, let's hit uh, worksheet 8K. And I think we could hit the odds. The odds would be perfect. So try those. We'll totally go over those uh, tomorrow or Wednesday. If you have the book, uh, please bring in worksheet 8L as well, because we'll go over that. And then on Thursday or Friday, we have our chapter test on this, okay? Is everyone okay with this? Did I do okay? Did I miss anybody? I'm pretty sure you all did the homework. So those of you who are here, you're getting the points. Those who weren't here, don't hear me say this unless they watch the video. That's all I got for you, my friends. What time are we out of here? 54. My gosh, how do we have so much time? All right. Is there anything that I went over too quickly that you need me to clarify? Including on the notes. Number seven. Number seven. Number seven from the notes. Yeah. Okay. Let me go back to that. Share screen. Okay, so number seven, can I clear it? Is it okay just to clear it? All right, so I just get rid of what I had. And let's walk through it. Item number one, I'm gonna have to square both sides to get rid of the radical. So the first thing you wanna do is put this side in parentheses, is that okay? Yes. I'm going to then square both sides. So this squaring of this radical, that gets rid of the radical. Okay. Then I'm going to take x minus 2 times x minus 2. So I'm just foiling this. So I get x squared minus 2x minus 2x is minus 4x. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Is that okay for this step? Yes. Okay. I want to make this side zero, so I'm uh, x squared is not going to get affected. I'm going to subtract two x, and I'm going to subtract two x. So that gives me negative six x. I'm going to add five. I'm going to add five. So that gives me nine. I can factor this. So this is the same thing as x minus three and x minus three, which is the same thing as x minus three to the second power. I'm gonna take the square root of both sides. So that should be plus or minus zero, but plus or minus zero is just zero. Then I get X minus three, add three to both sides. So X is equal to three. And then what you wanna do is you wanna double check to make sure that three works in your answer above. So you go to your original problem, two times three is six, minus five squared of uh, one is one. And then three minus two is one. So this answer did indeed work. Did that work a little better for you? Yeah, I just need you to go a little slower now. I got it. You got it. Is there any others yes. you, any of you need me to see? And I just want to let you know I am available before school in my office right next door. If you swing by on your days here at school, we could take care of that. Well, we could take care of any of that. Everyone's good? Everyone happy? Uh, Crock-Pot meal here in uh, my office was three Crock-Pots today. We had chicken fajitas. We had this unbelievable chili peppers, 
onions and squash thing. Oh, so good. That was another crock pot. And then we had a whole crock pot full of queso. So there's a whole bunch of math teachers in the hallway right now taking a food nap. And it's good stuff. So I bet you're all jealous that you're not here on a Monday. So, all right, friends, anything else? Test is going to be Thursday or Friday. Those of you that did not go on to Schoology to finish up that uh, the quizzes that are sitting there, please do. Let's see. A um, couple of you owe me an old quiz. Costa, you got something to make up with me. You need to see me on an off period, please. Isabella, you coming back this week? Yeah, I'm set to come back on Friday. So that's good. Friday. Okay. And yes, I need to move or no? Uh, yes, please. Okay. I will get us a classroom on Friday and I will let you all know um, on Wednesday. So my Tuesday, Thursday group, don't worry, we're in my room, but my Friday class, we'll have a different math room that we're in. Just because, you know, Isabella goes and falls head over end, end over end on the stairs. You know, I'm getting a phone call at some point and laughing at her. And uh, that wouldn't be fun. I'm just kidding. I'm happy to have you back. Uh, Emily Collins, looks like you have eight, eight through F to finish or to deal with me when you're done or whenever you feel you're ready. <coughs> Is that cool? Emily Collins, you here? Yes, that's cool. All right, cool. Um, so, but, so those of you who need to make it up, you know, let's try and get it done this week. If you need to go to next week, I'm totally fine with it. Okay. So but I'll need it. I will get a new room for us on Friday. I will double check to make sure where we are switching to anything else, my friends. We're good in the hood. Get out of here, friends. Have a great day. I'm going to stop.